And welcome back to Lily. High on life with a fabulous guest this week, the absolutely wonderful, unstoppable Tiber Ash. Tiber, welcome to Lily High on life. Thank you so much for having me. You really are at the tender age of, let's just say, uh, mid to late 20s. I'll take it. (laughs) (laughs) Um, At that wonderful tender age, you've already done so much. You have a spirit that's so much about living life to the fullest. So... um, I was thrilled to have you on. You were so highly recommended by so many people. So, and so let's start with the fact that you have a thriving business, but what, and while you were having, while your business was growing and becoming successful, you also decided to do nursing and have just finished your nursing exams extremely successfully. So lead us into exactly where you are now and what you're doing. So I officially graduated my nursing degree after four years on Thursday. Mazel tov. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, And during my nursing course, uh, the business called Finer Rings, um, I managed to grow it to the point where it was big enough to open up my first store on the iconic Chapel Street in South Yarra. Tell us a little bit about how you started it and grew it. Yeah, sure. So um, at the ripe old age of 24, I was working for a pretty great job, a construction company, and I was doing project coordination there. And even though the job was amazing and the people were great to work with, I would come home every day and I would really think to myself, this is a great job, it's good pay, I love working with the people I work with, but deep down I just didn't feel like I was fulfilled and that all the potential that I possibly had wasn't being utilised. So I, Were the days long? Were they stressful? Were they? Um, what was it that, that sort of left that gap with you? Because construction seems like such a wonderful field to get into at the moment. It was really great. It was a great experience. I learned how to build something from literally dirt all the way up, and I would watch it grow and be a part of building it. Um, I would sometimes get my hands dirty and put my hard hat, steel cap boots on, go to site. Uh, I was literally one girl in 20 guys. And was- I know. That's also <laughs> why I would have thought you yeah. would have been very happy. It was, honestly, it was a great job, no complaints. But after a long day of work, stressful or not stressful, if things went to plan or if they didn't come to plan, I would just come home and think, is this going to be the job that I'm going to have for the next 40 years? Is Fabulous. This, yeah. Is this where my life is headed? How long did you do it? Uh, I think I was doing it for three years at that time. So that's long enough to know. Yeah, it really was. And so I remembered and I reflected on where I was. And when I graduated year 12, I had actually applied to study nursing Because when you graduate, if you want to get your VCE score, you need to apply to something in university. And I had had applied to nursing and I had gotten in. But at the time, I thought, you know, I can take it any time in my life. I don't need to take it right now. I wanted to travel and see the world and live my life before starting Was there something about nursing that drew you to it rather than another career out of school? Yeah, I think nursing is... One of the most amazing careers where you can really give back to the community. You can really make someone's life when they're sick and unhealthy or if they're in hospital and uncomfortable, you can really give them something to make their life better. You can really have an impact. Had you been around hospitals or sick people before? Not really. Which is why I love the way you're describing nursing. (laughs) I mean, yeah, even at the young age, I knew that it would be a career that I would be able to use all of the warmth and friendliness and positivity that I thought I had. And it was just better than sitting probably behind a desk you know, typing in data entry, which, I mean, that's great as well, but I didn't think it was for me. And yeah, have you spent time in a lot more time in hospitals now while you've been doing yeah. your course? Yeah, so you actually have to do 800 hours in 
uh, hospitals in order to graduate and I did 828 so more than the allotted time. I love it, overachiever. (laughs) Not by choice. (laughs) And yeah so I at the age of 24 I decided uh, let's give nursing a go. Let's leave this job, go to school as a mature age student and let's see where life takes me. What I love about that and the way you describe nursing even now today as you're finishing your course and you've done all those hours is that uh, the big thing for me on Lily High on Life is not what happens to you but how you deal with it and how Mm. you look at it. So your view of nursing is wonderful after having had the experience as well because when I walk in to visit somebody I think oh those poor nurses what a horrible job (laughs) so God bless you. I mean there's highs and lows in every job Um, and as a student you get to experience everything on the spectrum but also even just now at my most recent placement that I finished on Thursday people leave the hospital and they look at you with such gratitude because no matter how much the doctors do and they do an amazing job it's the nurses that really provide that warmth and that encouragement and love really that's the truth yes yes i absolutely see that and love that you still do as well Mm. so take us back to when you started your um business your jewelry business so, how did you choose that and how did it develop? Yeah, good question. Um, I, I had uh, decided to study nursing and I knew as the young girl that I was, I would fly through my savings, not having work. So I decided to, that I wanted to start up something small on the side of studying so that I wouldn't have to go and Centrelink and I'd be able to support myself. And I actually wanted to get my hands in the chance to be my own boss and not just work for someone. So I decided, I thought about it. What type of product can I do that will encourage me to be creative, that was small enough that I could ship worldwide, that people would like, and that I thought that I wanted to do. And I had always loved making jewellery. It was always something that I thought was really awesome and You could create a personality out of a specific piece. You could put your heart and soul into something. So I decided, what is the jewellery business, although the industry is enormous, Mm -hmm. what is missing in it? And what could I introduce to the business, to the industry that would maybe take off? So I realised that in the jewellery industry, you either have stuff that is affordable but it's not great quality and you wear it three times and you have to throw it out right it's called landfill jewelry okay so like (laughs) you literally wear it for an event and you know you've spent ten dollars on something and you know you're going to throw it out or you spend five hundred dollars on something that will last longer but not everyone especially me at the age of 24 i couldn't afford a necklace that was five hundred dollars yep so i realized there was a gap that was missing in that affordable jewellery that was actually good quality. Mm -hmm. So that's what I decided to do. Make good quality, handmade jewellery that was affordable and also that you could wear every single day. So first of all, I need to really commend you on your thinking that you are taking responsibility for your financial future. That's (laughs) huge. (laughs) And also the way you worked it out. So how do you take it <clears throat> excuse me, from something that's in your mind, this is a good idea, but I know nothing about it, to actually producing? You know what? I just jumped straight in. I really thought, I'm not going to invest hundreds of dollars into this. I'm going to start it by myself from the ground up. So if it doesn't take off, I really haven't lost much. Yep. Just take a chance. Good girl. So I jumped online. I watched a video on how to create your own website. Love it. And I opened up an Instagram and a Facebook account and created my own website. I started off with Little Rings, which is why it's called Finer Rings. Please give out the website. Ah, So it's www.finerrings.com. And I 
just put the stuff on there. I took so photos. So you designed you, the sort of rings that you weren't finding. Yeah. And where did you get those first ones made? Yeah, so I always wanted to make it handmade in Australia. I, I thought that was really, and I still think that's really important because you can order anything online. You could be shopping for sneakers and in a shop in Chapel Street and then go online and find it for 20% off. Whereas if it's handmade and unique to Australia, you really can't price compare. You really so you can't. found Australian manufacturers? Well, yeah, there was a local jeweller that I knew and I had designed these things. They're made out of gold filled, which wasn't big in Australia at the time. It's a brand new material that acts like pure gold, but it has a silver inside. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't rust or tarnish, but you're also not paying pure gold pricing. Right. So I tested them out. I got a few made and I wore them. I gave them to my friends, gave them to my family. And I said, wear these for a couple of weeks and see what you think. They were simple, literally thin little bands, which I loved. Yes. And I went online and had a look and I really love the line that you've developed because it's also in a niche of young girls. Exactly. And yet it's still cool enough that I might slip something (laughs) on just because I want to be cool sometimes. The best thing about finer rings is that everything I make, I would literally wear. Right. Every single thing. I don't make anything that I wouldn't personally wear. So I love my jewellery and I wear it all the time. And every time I walk out, anything I'm wearing, people say, oh, where did you get that from? Where did you get that from? And it's such a good little confidence booster, you know, like my little designs people are liking. So there's still everything's still made in Australia? Absolutely. So Amazing. When I started the rings, it really took off quite quickly. I don't know. It just from pe- from Facebook and Instagram. Yeah, you know, I, I love it. Years ago, I ran like a promotion. I mean, and people are still doing it till today. But at, originally, it wasn't such a big thing. I said, you know, tag a friend and you can r- win a ring or something. And so that just grew. And I kept on doing competitions and giveaways, and people started following and buying, which was. Awesome. So this is very cool. How does it then get to a place where Mm. you're looking at a store, which Mm. is long-term commitment? (laughs) Honestly. (laughs) Financially as well as (laughs) time-wise. Honestly, it could have been luck. It could have been hard work. It could have been right time. But I got into the market where Goldfields wasn't big in Australia yet. I knew I, I put myself in the customer's shoes. So how would I make myself buy a piece of jewellery online without seeing it. And I knew I had to take good photos, have good-looking products, and make them affordable. And I have really marketed it to the girls that were my age because I knew them best. Because yes. I, myself, buy a lot of things online. And what influences me to buy something online? And you were doing this while you were studying. Yeah, so the business was really small at first, and nursing was my number one and the business was one which number two. So I would go to uni pretty much every day and then I'd come home and hand make and pack the orders and ship them out at night time. And that was good for the first year. It wasn't so good for the second year because the business really started taking off. And nursing is one of those time consuming things. It's not like doing arts or something. <laughs> I really didn't think it would be so hard. Yeah. I really didn't. But you have to know so much biology, so much anatomy, so much about every disease. Uh, you really have to invest your time. And I found that the business was growing and I started to shift my priority from nursing to the business. And I found that I liked spending time on the business more than I did studying about diseases that was that was the shift. Well, you were really stretching your mind. The more you m- use your mind, the better and sharper it gets, and yeah. especially in such different areas, studying and then practical business applications. <laughs> You've really <laughs> got to have a and split it, personality. I know, right? Each end of the spectrum. <laughs> I think it's just uh, knowing your market and loving your product. I think that's what it is. Absolutely. I genuinely believe that jewellery can be affordable and can be good quality and can have that 
local handmade look. And it gives pleasure. Yeah. It gives I pleasure it. when you buy and it gives pleasure when you think. So you're doing these two things. You're keeping up with both because you just passed mm. and mm. <laughs> you're, you, you saw it through to the end, even though you were doing this business that you seem to be leaning towards more. What were you thinking when you were trying to do all of that, like two full-time things in part-time? So at by the time I hit the second year of nursing, I was going to lots of local markets and online was growing and the markets were great because online is is good when people are buying, but the best feeling is that when you're at a market, someone walks past, backtracks and says, this stuff is beautiful. Oh, wait, I can actually afford it. Wow. It was such a good reaction being with people and seeing people's reaction. And I knew I was onto something because everyone really genuinely liked it, my stuff. Mm -hmm. So by the time I hit third year nursing, I, I realized I, I should go part-time. So I went part-time with nursing and pretty much full-time with the business. And I had a goal in 2018, which was last year. By the end of the year, I want to be able to sustain online so that if I want to, and I really wanted to open up my first shop, if I open up my, sh my first shop by the end of the year, can online sustain the rent at the very least? So I pushed online really hard. I did heaps of fr giveaways. I did paid for promotions. I spent a lot of time perfecting the website and photos and growing the business online to the point where I... I said, I can do this. I can actually open up my first that shop. That is so cool. Yeah. And at the same time, were your parents or anybody else giving you pressure to make sure you finished the nursing? Not at all. That Not was at all. you. I, I knew I had to finish it. I knew that if I start something, at the very least, get it done. It was really hard. That is such an amazing lesson for people. When you start something, finish it and get it done, whether you're going to do it or not. That's yeah. awesome. I think... All that time and effort that I'd have put into the first two years, balancing my two personalities, as you called it, it would have been such a waste if I hadn't just knuckled down for the last final year and just just got it done. Yeah. Even if it was passing at the very least, which it wasn't because I really wanted to do well and exceed. But yeah. Even and that makes it, it even sweeter because mm. you you know that you did it and yeah. um, and you did it on your own. And you still have this spirit which yeah. is exciting such, you honestly, about life. It's such a relief that I finally, after four years, it's just such a relief that I got it done. And I think it's an amazing achievement, you know. Absolutely yeah. is. Both the nursing and the business. Yeah. Do you have somebody now mentoring you or did you have people helping you with the business as well? No. On you? <laughs> no, I kind of, I I can't. I can say I'm a little bit business savvy. Yeah. Even though I've well, never done a, a business degree or anything. No, no, but we're pro doing project management, yeah. especially in construction, teaches you a lot. Yeah. I can also say that being a shopaholic, I really know <laughs> how to influence other shopaholics. I can really say that the photos I take are really beautiful, and they the products. A good quality and, you know. Did you take the photos yourself or did yeah. you bring in a, you took them yourself as yeah, well? Yeah, so there's actually an amazing guy named Ethan Brivik, shout out to him, EB Photography. So he took the product shots on the website, but the Instagram and the Facebook, that's pretty much all me. Yeah. Very, very cool. Yeah. And you got married in the middle of all of this oh too. Oh my gosh. Shout out to Jared Eisen, who's <laughs> next door. <laughs> um, he, he and I met... Uh, I think two years ago now and I was trying to get through nursing at the same time the business was on the brink of getting really big and we met uh, and it how was did a, you meet how did we meet the classic old classic old way we met online actually Love yeah, it. swipe right, swipe left kind of thing. <laughs> and uh, But not on Tinder. Uh, you know, maybe. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Tinder or J swipe, one of them, one of them. And uh, we went out to a bar and we just laughed the whole time. So <laughs> We are having such a good time. Khalid uh, is a very young, I think maybe he's 19 or 20, 
uh, young artist where from LA and he writes every single one of his song, all songs, all of his music and every single song I just love. And I saw him for the second time when he came to Australia last week. Yeah, last week. And I just love it. Very, very yeah. cool. Just really stuff and lyrics with real connection and real yeah. soul. I can yeah. see why you love it. So just before the song, we were just getting into how you met your husband and um, his name's Jared. And uh, tell us a, tell us a little bit about <laughs> Jared and how he got your attention in the middle of studying, expanding a business, everything else you're doing. Yeah, Jared and I had a very good first date. We went to a bar, um, had a couple of drinks, had a really good chat. And everything I said, the TV shows, we watched the same things, we had the same humour. And it struck me that we had very different upbringings. I'm from a very orthodox home. Um, I'm one of ten kids. Wow. Yep. And my dad is a rabbi and... Shout out to Rabbi Ash and Sue Ash, my mum. And my mum's a, a teacher for young girls and boys in Yavna School. And Jared grew up in an area in Sydney that is nowhere near Bondi, the Jewish area. He has one beautiful sister, Steph, and beautiful parents. Um, and he he had a totally different upbringing than me, both Jewish, but very different and I thought how amazing it is that he and I can grow up so differently except have the same political views, same mindset, same sense of humour and same directions in life, really. It sounds like a real bus shirt yeah. thing, the coming together <laughs> of souls. And he's a pilot. Yeah, yeah. Which I is mean, the other <laughs> I always thought I wanted to marry someone unique and different, and I got it. Jared is an amazing <laughs> pilot. I'm not going to say who he works for because he'll kill me. Um, okay. <laughs> he works for a commercial airline <laughs> in Australia and one of those guys that comes home after a 12-hour day and is still smiling because he loves Love what he what he does, what he what he does, and he just loves everything about being a pilot. Yeah, love it. And he and you were saying that he also encouraged you with the business. Yeah. So we met while the business was about to take off, and I had the mindset that I wanted to open up a shop, but I wasn't quite there yet. And in 2018, um, I I knew I wanted by the end of the year I wanted to have my first shop, and I tried and I tried and real estate agents are really hard to get in touch with, especially because I didn't want a full year. I wanted to do a three-month pop-up just to see how I went because everyone Smart. said retail's not what it used to be. I really wanted Chapel Street. And they said Chapel Street is dying. It's this, it's that. And I, I didn't know how the jewellery would do on Chapel Street. But I tried to get in and no one wanted to hear me. Literally no one wanted to answer my phone calls, return my emails. And Jared pushed and pushed and Jared was the one that actually found the shop on Chapel Street and he said look at this Tiber this shop is perfect location it's exactly where you want to be and it's got beautiful light and I said let's give it a go let's email and see what see what we can do and emailed them they got back to me straight away the real estate agents were amazing the landlords were phenomenal and put up my got the keys within a week of emailing the real wow. estate agent Yep. Walked in and I just saw finerings. I just could see it. I could visualise finerings being Another in that Another Bashirat kind of thing. Yeah, Love honestly. it. Um, Ty, but tell me, and this is a serious question, okay. even though you're going to laugh at <laughs> you're going to laugh at it, uh -oh. but how did you find time to date and really have a relationship with somebody when your life was already so full? I think if it's important to you, you make time for it. And it's not like at the end of a busy day at school and at finerings, I would make the time for Jared. It wasn't like that. When it's a guy that you like spending time with, you do those things together, right? So he would help me with finerings, he would help me with packaging, and we'd spend time together. Or we would go and go on a date and at the end of a long day, and it wouldn't be drags him it would be it something would be, that just i would spending time together yeah. just seemed natural yeah it was and really natural and is. he fit in so well to my life had he moved to melbourne or was just yeah so he had lived here for a few years his job 
was made him based in Melbourne, even though he was from Sydney. Uh, he knew that Melbourne was better than Sydney, like all of us do. <laughs> <laughs> and Love so it. <laughs> he had already planned to move here and raise a family here. They, that was his goal. So, so Tyba, you grew up in an Orthodox family from yeah. f- from from birth, as yeah, they say. Yeah, exactly. And Jared didn't. Yeah. And so, talk to me about growing up in a large Orthodox family because there were ten of you. Yeah. How do you? How do you even get the personality you have when you're one of ten? <laughs> I think that's a very easy answer. You need to be loud or be swallowed up. Like every single one of us pretty much have a very loud, outgoing personality. I think when you grow up in a house full of noise, you end up just being noisy. I mean, I was always loud, had a character... Yeah. <laughs> so it not this is not just politically please don't give me a politically correct answer. Uh-oh. But um <laughs> You've got ten. You're one of ten. Yep. Your relationships with your brothers yeah. and sisters are some closer than others. I don't know, yeah. No, that's a definitely when you grow up in a family of ten kids, you're going to get along more with others than with, you know, than not with everyone. I definitely don't get along with everyone. I think. Everyone knows that. Um, I get along pretty well. But you still have a basic love and commitment 100%. to every single one 100%. of them. 100%. And I think even if you don't get along necessarily 100% with all of your siblings, when you grow up and they start having kids and they are building families of their own, it doesn't matter because those kids, you love them to death. And it, pretty much all my married siblings, except for one, or two have kids and they are like my own children. Children, they understand. Are beautiful. Yeah. And so um, the also what you said about you knew that you wanted to be religious and have a religious family and yet you've met somebody that you're really in sync with that is yeah. not. First of all, tell me what was it that that you knew for sure that you wanted to have to be religious and it, yeah. It's a good question. My family is, even though we all grew up Orthodox, we're not all Orthodox at the moment. Um, there's 10 of us, and we are on a wide spectrum of religiousness, um, and we're all doing our own path. I think when you get to the age of 18, 19, 20, and you're finding yourself, and you're thinking about where you see your life headed in the future, you really get to be able to choose what's important to you. And for me, it was never really pushed on as an adult to be religious it wasn't something that was forced upon me I found a love in being Jewish at the end of a hard week on Shabbos to turn your phone off not be on Instagram not be on Facebook to it's the one time that Jared and I have real conversations that's the truth I'm not surrounded by my business I'm not involved with my phone it's a beautiful feeling and I think that is what I want my children to grow up with. A house that loves being Jewish and loves the traditions and the history and the backgrounds and of being Jewish rather than it being forced upon, finding a connection to it. I think that's And you so really important. have a passion for life itself, yeah. which is so obvious when yeah. you, after two minutes of meeting <laughs> you. So you meet this guy who's yeah. never been religious. Yeah who doesn't know a whole lot about it, yeah. who never thought he would even date an orthodox girl. How did all of that work for Jared? <laughs> uh, so many funny stories I can say. I don't know which ones are appropriate and which ones aren't. Did he know you were religious on the first Straight date? Straight away. First date. First date. <laughs> can I say the story, Jared? <laughs> yes, yeah, right. you can. First date, I said to him, Jared, are you looking for something serious? And he said, yeah, I actually am. And he said, what about you? And I was, I genuinely do not think before I say things. So don't get offended by this, anyone that's listening. I said, yeah, but not with you. (laughs) And what I meant by that was that I knew I wanted a religious household and I had to backtrack a lot and explain because his face just dropped. He was like, oh gosh. But I wanted a household that was orthodox and practicing um, Judaism and I knew he wasn't. And I just said simply, I'm looking for someone that's, you know, religious. That was it, really. And um, I think it just, it blossomed from there. I think he was able to see why I'm religious 
it's not because it's forced upon me, but because I love it. And he loves it now. He loves going to shul. He goes to shul every Shabbos. Uh, he loves having a kosher home. You know, after two months of dating, he didn't have a kosher anything in his house. I love that he was open to it. And I have a couple of friends who had the same thing. They dated <laughs> non-Jewish guys who are now very happily orthodox. Oh, wow. We're just going to take a station break? Yeah, sure. We're always looking for people with an interest in radio, either presenting your own show or being on the technical side. Become a volunteer now. Head to our website at j-air.com.au. Follow the Get Involved link and click on Become a Volunteer Now. You're listening to Tiber Ash on Lily High on Life, and we're having a good time. Now, I must say, Tiber just uh, shared a story about when she first met her husband <laughs> and how disappointed he was to hear that she <laughs> may not be that into him. But you have to understand, <laughs> since you're, since we're doing radio, sorry, Tiber, a little closer. Sorry. Since we're doing radio, that Tiber isn't just pretty on a scale of one to okay. ten. Okay. She's got to be an 11. So <laughs> <laughs> that may have had something to do with it as well. But She's just lying. Just for She's our just radio lying. people. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so how long did you guys date? And, yeah, and, so and was he fully from by the time um, you got married? So it's, Jared's an amazing person. He is just sort of like me, but not as outgoing as I am and not, I'm just completely unreserved. Um, Jared's a very beautiful person. He's much kinder than I am. He's a gentle soul. And he was so enthusiastic, and still is, really. We made his house kosher after two months of dating. That was it. Um, everything in his house after three months, I think there was not one trace of it not being kosher. Uh, his- to the standard of my dad, like wow. that kosher. <laughs> and his parents were okay with it? Look. <laughs> They're listening now, so I'm going to say yes. I think <laughs> no, but see, because I know it. Especially, uh, I lived I in America for 26 years. There are people that would rather have their children become Hare Krishnas than Orthodox Absolutely. religious, I, and they're Jewish, so that's why I, I think the they question. they were they were curious. They had a big question mark about what does this mean? Like, are you changing completely? H- how does this affect our relationship now? Does that mean? you know you can't eat at our house does that mean you won't go out for dinners with us which is okay i mean yeah. i mean obviously it was okay i think now that they've come over and they've been embraced by quite a few friday night meals and eating kosher they they see it for what it is what we see it you know that it's not necessarily a complete lifestyle change it is to an extent changing things in your life but we are who we are we'll never change ourselves it doesn't mean we have to change our personality just because we've changed our lifestyle. Yeah. Does he come from a big family, small family? How many really siblings? Really small. He has just one sister. Gorgeous. Yeah. And you already said you loved her. Yeah, I love her. <laughs> <laughs> and your parents, his parents, yeah. nice. It's always good that they live in Sydney and we live in Melbourne. <laughs> we get along so, so well. <laughs> yeah. But really the bottom line is that when they see Jared happy, they must be happy that he's happy. Yeah. I think they were also a bit scared by me at first <laughs> me being so loud and boisterous and coming from a big family and still to this day Paul Jared's dad will say oh you know we're from a family of four and you're from a family of 20 you know it's still like a culture shock <laughs> yeah and it's wonderful and I understand because I'm from a very very small family as oh, well really? and I always wanted to marry into somebody with 10 brothers and sisters <laughs> but not religious <laughs> so uh, yeah, yeah. Like, that's a hard find no no <laughs> so Maybe I'm not. I'm still looking oh, yeah. <laughs> but they don't have doesn't have to be 10 10 <laughs> uh, so it's still all good but um so you've been married 2 3 years now no so we've been married oh since March this year. Oh, March yeah. this year, so we're, not even a year. I would still say we're newlyweds. Um, yeah, we, we've been, we known each other for two years. We dated for a year and then got engaged after, you know, after a year. Nice. And then pretty much we've been married since March, maybe nine months now. Very That's awesome. Cool. Love it. So one of the other really big things um, that I like to talk about is relationships. Yeah. And relationships 
that you've had since childhood and you've got a lot of those you've got a lot of school friends that are still very close 100 percent. my best friends in the whole wide world are my friends that i've had since childhood and i'll shout them out because they'll want it it's d sarah faggy uh rachel <laughs> what makes close friendships because one of the reasons i like to get into it and ask mm. the question is that some people don't connect some people don't know yeah. how to connect i think especially with people like me that not always say the right thing and not always do the right thing. Um, it's finding people that accept you every single every single stage of your life and everything that you do. And not only just accept you, but support you. So even when I say something that's maybe controversial or not to their liking or probably, I shouldn't say out loud, um, they still... You know, they still, they still love real, Yeah, they still you. love you. Yeah, and we all have different lives now. Um, my best friend just moved to si- to Sydney. She just got married. My other best friend literally just moved to New York, and my other best friend has two beautiful children. And we're all in different, you know, different ways of life at the moment. But we are always there for each other, and we have a pretty good WhatsApp group. That's and, very yeah. <laughs> thank God for modern technology. Right? So good. So. Yeah. So there are things that um, that happen in people's lives mm. that they don't want to share with people that are se- deep, 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 deep down secrets. Do you have anything like that? Because you're so outspoken and so outgoing. And I'm asking the question in the context of, yeah. is that one of the things with friendships, that level of trust yeah. about not gossiping or repeating? I've actually never been asked that question before. But if I were to think about it, I'd genuinely don't think there's anything that I've done or that's happened to me that my best friends don't know about. Everything that has happened throughout our lives, no matter how embarrassing or awful it is, we share it with one another. And I think if you're willing to open up every single part of your life to individuals and they're still there for you at the end of the day, that's the marks of a true friendship and a true Mm. relationship. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And monsters hide in the dark. I can't imagine anything that anybody would have ever done mm. that um, that you couldn't say out loud. Yeah. But a lot of people keep those secrets because they feel that um, the people are going to judge them. Yeah. So I talk about judge about how you feel about judgmental. In life, everyone's going to judge. You can't say that you're a perfect person and then you don't judge. I judge people. People judge me. It's just life. It just happens. And I think the people that judge you the hardest is yourself, really. No one's going to look inside yourself and see everything that you see, really. And I think it it makes you who you are, how hard you are on yourself and how badly you judge yourself. And mistakes. When you make mistakes, how do you see mistakes in your own life? They happen. Life is not always sunflowers and sunshine. I mean, we live in Melbourne where there's four seasons in a day and that's life sometimes. Things just happen. And you have to really... It's going to sound cliche, but I, I really live by learning from everything and being able to grow... At, a better person and develop your personality based on where you've done the mistakes you've made and who you are so obviously if jared or one of your close close friends and i don't know whether you'd include your parents in this <laughs> sort of said something to you at uh, tyba don't do that or you shouldn't have done that i get that told all the time <laughs> really <laughs> yeah i do a lot of things i probably shouldn't do i get told on a Every day. Every day. Seriously. Well, my dad is not like me at all, and he gets constantly embarrassed by me, for sure. Um, So he's constantly saying, don't do that, or do this, do that. Jared, do you take take it? Do you take it into consideration? No. (laughs) You just do what you... God bless you. Always stay that way. (laughs) Yeah, I I, from a young, young, young child, I've always been told that that that's not you shouldn't do that sometimes if it's really something i shouldn't do i'll listen but most of the time no (laughs) i just (laughs) do what i want (laughs) and um jared's your husband now and so the closeness and intimacy that you have with him have you had that with uh before like with any of your siblings or Mm. any of your close friends um i always say i've got 
two life partners. That's one of them is my best friend and one of them is Jared. <laughs> um, I don't think... I, I really don't think Jared... There's anyone like Jared in my life that knows me like Jared knows me. Every single part of me. Uh, he's just a, an amazing person that accepts me in every every part of my life, really. I just love that. There are so many aspects to the few things, and there's a lot more we could talk about. Yeah, right? <laughs> um, that you have, um, that you've just so impressed me with, and especially it's your personality, your your love of life and people and everything, your really focused ability to go in and finish what you start and, mm. and just keep going with what you love and knowing what you don't want and being able to to stop that even yeah. when it's going well but most importantly of all the relationship that you have with your husband that's not <laughs> even a year old I mean that says hmm. so so much for the future and everything else and Thank um, you. Yeah. And, and I hope you find that the uh, the time you spent in construction and everything else <laughs> will one day come back to you and good luck <laughs> yeah. with that nursing decision Thank um, you. but that's about all the time we've got for now. Thank you so, so much for that. What a great hour of my life spent. I've loved interviewing yeah, you. Same. Thanks.